welcome once again to MG Tracy. So today I was going to give you really a quick guide comparing the Dyson V15 Detect Absolute. So that's the new one that has, among other things, a laser head for hard floors. And the current, I think, best stick vacuum from Shark, which is the Duo Clean, which also has the ability to bend in the middle. So they are very different price points. One, the Dyson is three or four times as much money as the Shark. I'll put the links below so you can have a look at current pricing for both models. They both have a similar runtime on their batteries. The Shark's a little bit heavier. I haven't shown you all the different attachments that both come with, because to be honest, how often do you use them? Once a blue moon in the car. They both have anti-tangle technology. It's done in very different ways. I'll tell you a bit more about that in a moment. They're both about the same length and they both have the same warranty. So I'll show you a few of the differences here for you to choose which is right for you. That's going to be a combination, I think, of the budget you have available because the price of these two is very different and just how clean do you need the air in your house. If you've already got air purifiers running in your house and that, then maybe you don't need the Dyson's hospital class filtration systems. Anyway, let's have a look at these two in more detail. So the, the both machines are not particularly heavy. Uh, the shark feels a bit more heavy and unwieldy. I think it's primarily because of the shape of this head. And remember this head doesn't clean all of the floor area either. And that's because the Dyson is a direct drive. So it's got a digital motor, which actually lives inside the roller. And you see you've got a much bigger head with the shark. In there is a normal motor and then like a wide elastic band that then drives the two heads and also you've got the weight of two heads rather than one. Um, they're both about the same noise. What I was going to do now is actually just weigh them and see how much difference there is between the two machines. So I weighed the two machines, in fact these scales weren't happy unless I got on there. So I got on myself and then I got on with both machines to work out the difference. So the Shark weighs nine and a quarter pounds and the Dyson weighs seven and a quarter pounds. So you do notice that extra couple of pounds there when you're lubbing this around, particularly if you're carrying the Shark upstairs. Some of the changes to the Dyson V15 compared to the V11 are that the heads have changed. So you've got this new uh, smaller brush head here for hard floors that has a little laser built in the corner. Uh, now you'd think that just sounds like completely useless, but actually it does turn out to be really very useful because it highlights small dust, dirt and hairs that you can't really normally see on hard floors. The standard brush head on the Dyson is now anti-tangle. It sort of has a comb at the back. It works well, but it has increased the noise because you do hear the carbon fiber brushes hitting against the comb that removes the hair that's on it. The uh, Shark has a dual head system. That's how it copes with I'll turn that over. That's how it copes with the hairs and that also works very well. It's just that the head's a bit unwieldy. It's not balanced very well. It's difficult to move around because you can see it's like twice the size. What I was going to do though is to show you, because um, the uh, Shark has white LEDs on the front like a lot of the vacuums do now. But to be honest, what does that do? I, it doesn't actually light up the dust. And I'm going to try to see if I can film. It's really difficult to show you that the green laser does in fact show you where dust, dirt and hair is. And that means you can see where you vacuum so you don't miss anything. So this is not the, the easiest thing to film, um, but when you're using it on the floor, you will notice it yourself. So I've just attached the laser head to this, but if we fire it up and just have a look at the counter here, you'll see um, that you start to see more of the dust. So can you see there's a hair there, look at how that lights up. And there's all these other particles. So although it's not spinning that fast, you can see that it's gone. So 
So with the Dyson, you can actually see where you've not been and what you've uh, vacuumed. But, but also, of course, you've got the back display here that is uh, showing you how many particles you've picked up. So in that little run there, it picked up over a million small particles, which are the size of pollen. So it is vacuuming up quite a lot. So it may be that some of the others are doing that, but of course you don't know. And if you can't see it, it makes it more difficult. So we've got some black tiled floors and they are notoriously difficult to see dirt. That's one of the attractions of them, to be honest. But if you just hit it with a white light, it doesn't really make a lot of difference. All you can see are the glitter pieces. For some reason though, if you hit it with a green laser light, you can see, you start to see things there. So, does this matter awfully? Well, it really depends how clean you need your house to be. If you're just trying to whiz round and get the worst stuff off the floor and you've got cats and dogs, then both of these are gonna cope with the long hairs and they're gonna pick up lots of stuff. If you are like me, a household where I'm an asthmatic, my daughter's an asthmatic, my grandchildren are asthmatic, then we unfortunately have to try and get our house as dust free as we can. We can't have that ray of sunlight that comes through the window and you see all the bits of dust floating in the air. So the, so the Dyson has such a good HEPA hospital filtration system that even if smoke goes in, it doesn't come out the other end. And things really small like pollen and viruses, they're all getting caught. And if you're using a Dyson all the time, the air quality is gonna be better than it is with the Shark. But of course, you're paying a lot for this. So, you know, the, depending on how good a deal you get on the Shark, you may be paying three or four times as much for the Dyson. Uh, and if you don't need to have your floor and your air that absolutely clean, like unfortunately we need it, then perhaps the Shark is better value for money for you. So a little bit which one of these you go for depends on uh, your needs of a vacuum. They both have a very similar runtime. They both empty easily enough into the bin and they both charge and sit happily in the garage. One of the features that the Shark has that the Dyson V15 my model doesn't have is you've got this ability to bend in the middle here. So you can just unclip that and then you can drop the whole thing down at funny angles. Um, obviously for British furniture that doesn't really help an awful lot to be honest. But if in American furniture which tends to be higher off the ground then that is going to allow you to get underneath the furniture without uh, being on your hands and knees and then snap it back up you're back to a normal hold it up there and it locks completely thank you for watching i hope you found that a useful video please like share and subscribe come back every day for lots more fun here on mg tracy if you continue watching you can see a short film now of the history of the vacuum cleaner as put together by the science museum in london this is Paul from London saying I'll see you next time. Cheerio for now.